Well, it's nice to see you, to see you nice, as Bruce would say. I promise I won't ever do that again. Um, welcome to this year's 2014 Comp 1 uh, exam programming exam solution tutorials. Hopefully you already know that this year's exam is on the Card Predict program, and this video is just going to introduce a few things. Let's make sure you've done this first. Hopefully you've already downloaded the pre-release, got the code, got the file. Uh, your teacher should have given it to you. You can't get it off the EAQA website unless you're a teacher, but it's already all over the web. Look at um, the student room or the wiki book. You'll be able to get those files pretty easily. Hope you've played the game quite a lot. Hopefully you've you know, perhaps got a pair of, uh, pack of cards out and played the game. Make sure you've got your head around what's going on. Analyse the code. You should have already written a list of procedures, ideally with variables for each procedure. Ideally, you've created a structure chart showing how the parameters are passed. So that when you're looking at these videos, you're not having to think at all, what on earth is this procedure? Oh, where's that variable come from? What's T card structure? All these things should be second nature to you. If they're not, they need to be. You need to be really sort of embedded in the code uh, already. Uh, analyzing code, unless you know it backwards, is a pain. Obviously, you know, I'm not the only person on the web who's doing this. Uh, the wiki book's got some great resources. The student room's got some great resources. There's plenty of other places. No doubt your teachers are publishing stuff. Uh, I think it's really useful that we can we can all share it and make sure that we're getting the very most out of the experience of preparing for this exam. It's not just about passing the exam. It's about you really experiencing the process of analysing a programme taking it on and then taking it forward because that if you become a programmer particular particularly could be uh, a key part of what you do this year's pests in the past i've always just done one video per pest and it works quite well and in fact if if, if the way i'm planning to do this doesn't work well I'll, I'll flick back to it but for this year i'm planning to have two pests sorry two videos per pest so each tutorial will have one video that sets the problem, gives you a few hints, make sure you can see, sort of explain what I'm trying to, uh, where I'm trying to go, go with it, but I'll stop short of giving you the solution. Then there'll be a second video, which just basically, you just literally, you see me coding the solution. Uh, hopefully that means that uh, you can have a bit of time to practice hopefully i'll be able to get this first section out to you a little bit earlier so that you've got lots of problems to work on but also when you come to sort of uh creating your solutions and really wanting to sort of um practice it might make it a little bit quicker for you just to flick to the solution part of my my pest which i know are things that people find useful i really want you to comment on whether you think this is a good idea uh, obviously if you've got other resources uh, that you've spotted, just add them as comments to the, to the bottom of uh, a, a video. Right, let's go through what I've been able to spot so far. I say I, obviously I've been looking at all the, the resources on the web as well. Um, some of these ideas are mine, some are other people's, uh, some of my students. Uh, there's so many this year that I've, that I've spotted already that I've split them into different sections. Uh, stuff that affects the play of the game. Uh, stuff that's just something to do with the deck. The high scores is obviously ripe for changing because at the moment it's not high scores, it's recent scores. And in fact, there's been questions. If you go back to the cricket game uh, a few years ago, three years ago, four years ago, there was a whole section of questions on uh, scoring and how people have scored. I'm not saying exam boards reuse questions, but they're... You know, especially if that was handled badly in that exam, when you look at the examiner's report, it might be they've thought, oh, okay, let's see if we can use this sort of way of working again. Statistics. Mm, okay, well, I'm not 100% not sure about this, but we'll, uh, there may well be some stats because they do like a bit of maths. Uh, obviously, validation. I've put validation all the way down here because there's not a huge amount this year. And then stuff with the display, things, you know, adding a menu item, that sort of stuff. Here's what I've got so far. I don't... I'm not going to go over it in detail, but in terms of gameplay, it's a bit clunky just to say, do you want to go higher? It could be higher, lower, even higher, lower, draw. Uh, the same value cards, when you get two cards of the same value, it's a little bit unsatisfactory. Obviously, in Bruce's version, you don't get nothing for a pair, not in this game. That's 
not how it works currently. Because lower isn't lower, it's lower or a draw, isn't it? Because it's not higher. Anyway, uh, it just feels that, that that there's stuff you could do with that for sure. And I've given a few options here. Uh, again, in Play Your Cards Right, in fact, a lot of card games, there's an option to burn. Basically, I don't like that card. I'll have another one, thanks. So if you play poker or blackjack or, um, sorry, we're in Britain, uh, pontoon, uh, or any else, there's, there's quite often a chance just to throw your cards away and say, redeal me. Uh, aces could be high or low. I'll be honest with you, the data structure they've picked, this feels awkward, so I don't, I don't think it's going to come up, but... Uh, yeah, it'd be, it, it, I don't think that's, I don't think that was going to come, but it's just a possibility. And of course, we could just play with one suit of cards, so just with the diamonds. That would be uh, a simplification of the game. Deck, uh, you can sort of uh, basically display a deck as a two D array in sort of uh, columns or suits, rows or numbers. Uh, not massively sure how we'd use that. It's quite easy to do, but anyway, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be something with that shuffle. It's rubbish. So inefficient. Uh, riffling is lovely. You know, if you if you look at riffling, there's quite a lot of maths, even a bit of computer science. There's some analogies in computer science to riffling. So um, that feels very tempting. If I was an examiner. Uh, there's there's quite a few other riffle, uh, quite a lot of, quite a few other shuffling algorithms that exist. They'd have to give you the algorithm. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't think they'd ask you to to work it out for yourself. But still, it's 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 possible. Good possibility. And, and apart from anything else, uh, these these shuffles they're quite nice for you to play with. And uh, if you were to you know perfect two or three shuffles, I think you would really be developing your programming agility, uh, which would be just excellent. Preparation for the exam anyway. Uh, quantification of the deck. This might fall into stats actually, but how random is it? You know, uh, the ability to save a particular deck for some reason. Because uh, we've obviously got a file for a particular deck there, haven't we? So the idea that we could save a particular deck state, if you like, would would be would be you know, it's not hard. It, it'd be possible. Uh, the, the exam board has had a few problems with certain centres being able to save files from VB. So possibly saving files, it's not going to be mega high up on their, their list of things to do. Especially if they haven't advised us that it would need to. But there's, you know, it's, it's a perfectly plausible thing for a programme to do, so we should be able to do it. Uh, check for adjacent cards the same value. So basically how many, pa how many pairs we're going to come up for a particular deck. Uh, Something that I think is an absolute must, even if it's not going to come in the exam, got to be able to generate a complete deck in order. So basically, a simple algorithm to be able to generate from, for instance, the ace of spades through to the king of spades, followed by the next suit in order, followed by the next suit in order, followed by the next suit in order, just for your testing. I mean, just create yourself that algorithm anyway, because when you're doing other stuff, being able to uh, test your algorithm with a deck in order is massively easier than having to do it with any other version of the deck. Scores. Not much with this, but I'd have said this is very likely. So uh, you've almost certainly spotted that if you don't whack a name in with the uh, with the with when a score is held that that causes a problem. So you know a valid presence check validation, I'll mention that the validation as well seems obvious. Uh, at the moment, it just comes, I think it's the top score is the latest version, then it pops off the top, doesn't it? Uh, so you could turn it into high scores with the lowest score overwritten. This could be either a change or a new option, increase it to five, this is a doddle. Uh, saving the high scores seems fairly, uh, fairly obvious as well. I mean, these are just, they're not much, but they're, 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 Good bread and butter tasks. Nothing that posh algorithmically, but you know they would make sure that you knew what you were doing with with certain bits of uh, code because it's just some good honest uh, selection and iteration there. Stats. Some of this is horrific. Uh, 
So any nasty stats, they, they'll have to give you the algorithm because there aren't any real stats on the course and we don't assume you're doing A-level maths. But I think if they gave you the algorithm, they could expect you to code it. You don't need to understand the maths. You think you look at last year's, uh, they they expect you to be able to code Fibonacci without uh, even ever seeing it before. And they they explained it. So, you know, there's a there's a few things here. Oh sorry, I'll just go back. Deck comparison, comparison between two deck states. I could I could yeah, you know, that's obviously something that occurs quite often in um in computer science in other circumstances. So that might be something that uh someone who really enjoyed their computer science as an examiner might be tempted to to, to throw in there. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Uh, it might be, I've not looked at this at all yet. It might be that when we start to uh, to see it for 52 cards, it just becomes an absolute nightmare. Then good old validation. Every year there's a bit of validation. At first I couldn't see any validation in this, uh, in this code at all. But there is actually a presence check and a length check of the player's name. There is a range uh, or presence check for the menu choice. It, I know it still works, but there's a, there's a bit of clunkiness in there. It'd be, it'd be quite nice just to, to have that. Uh, I think either validating or verifying the deck could be quite good. Because if we're talking about different deck states being saved, and we're talking about you know maybe a different deck file being uh, pulled in, the idea that we check that it's a, we would check that the deck is complete. Or even just 52 cards. There's a variety of validations or, or verifications, I should say, that that deck is is, is valid um, or correct. Uh, and of course, the, there is the annoyance with the uh, yes and no is only currently lowercase. So you can either just put to caps or or sorry to, to lower, and um, so it's not to caps, is it anymore? It's to, it's to upper or to lower. Uh, or you could validate. There's a few things you could do just to make sure that if there's capitals put in, uh, it would handle it. There's, I mean, there's more display things to change than this, but uh, things that really jumped out at me is that the, the, the gameplay as it's views on the screen is not very nice at the moment. So, you know, clearing the screen, maybe changing it so that uh, that message to say, you know, do I think the next card will be higher than lower than the Ace of Spades, for instance? I think that would be, that would be nicer. Uh, you could have a little row with the current cards displayed. I think outputting the whole deck in its current order is quite likely. Uh, I have written, or straight away I wrote uh, new versions of the get suit and get rank uh, functions just so it displays uh, it as one character. So it goes A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, T, J, Q, K. Because when you're outputting, it's just so much nicer just to have uh, two characters expressing your current card. Particularly when you've got some nasty arrays going on there uh, and you're trying to flick through to sort of play with sorting and play with uh, other shuffling and things like that. That uh, I, I would say just do that anyway to make to make life easy. If you have create create yourself a couple of algorithms, I'll, I'll, I'll create a a little sort of tools video of uh, the things that I've suggested here just to make your life easier for testing really. They're not necessarily going to come up in the exam but just they'll make your life a little bit quicker and easier uh, when you're trying to code things and things are going wrong. Please 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 comment on my videos. Uh, let me know what you think, what you'd like more of. Uh, if you don't understand something I'm more than happy to uh, suggest other things. I hope you found this introduction use useful and uh, I hope like me you're excited about this year's exam and look forward to uh, really getting your teeth into coding these solutions. Uh, till the next video, goodbye.